So welcome to the October 27th uh, DEI working group meeting. It's good to have you all here. Um, if you could add yourself to the minutes, you had candy corn for breakfast. First of all, candy hey, I'm corn I'm a grown-up. I can do that. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> Did you have like peeps and those weird like pumpkin things that are like made of yeah. candy corn stuff? Ugh. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. Oh, do you eat those like those peanut butter things too that come in the and they have like they're like old super old and they would always have like dark spots on them uh, like, yeah. all right they came in like orange and black wrappers uh, i know exactly what you're talking about they're like kind of this weird peanut buttery caramel yeah. kind of uh, stuff you like those not really i do like circus peanuts though those are amazing what? you're like yeah. the, i thought they just made those to throw them away no absolutely not <laughs> They make them for me personally. <laughs> All right. Well, circus peanut. Lauren Kafaya, do you know what those are? They kind of like the orangey, like squishy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about it. Well, well, just... Unfortunately, I do not. <laughs> well, we got to get a picture. Hold on. <laughs> So I just read that they're like orange marshmallows. I just don't know that I agree that it's a marshmallow texture. Like it feels like spongier than that. Very dense marshmallow, yeah. <laughs> Matt, you're muted, but you're talking. There's all this stuff like the mystery of circus peanuts. Like <laughs> there's like stories about about how strange they are. Anyway, I just learned something about you. <laughs> All right, cool. Now that we're now that we've recorded that, <laughs> let's go ahead and get rolling a little bit. Um, so, you know, with just four of us on here, we can. Oh, Lauren just posted something about circus peanuts. That's them. Ah. The wiki page. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, Kafai and Lauren, you're both here in Omaha, so I can Kafai maybe. But are they like gummy bears? No. Oh. They're they're like a million times worse. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've had marshmallows before, but I didn't really fancy the texture the first time that I had it. It was in a cookie, which is so surprising. How about this? I, I expected crunch. And that was <laughs> imagine mixing a marshmallow and a gummy bear into one like candy thing. That would be very hard to chew. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right. <laughs> this is this is definitely on my to-do list. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, we're back to this. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. You can see I have circus peanut tabs <laughs> all over my <laughs> all over my my browser. Anyway, um, so just a few things from kind of last week that might be nice to take a look at. Um, one of the things that we had talked about, if you recall, was the mentorship stuff, and we had talked about putting together a form by which people could kind of express interest in joining the community. Thank you to Elizabeth for putting together um, the start of a form. I haven't looked at this at all. Um, and so I, I think, you know, it'd be nice to get this this up. Um, so just, is there anything you want to point out here, Elizabeth, or? Um, maybe if people could just read the list and see if I missed anything. Okay. Or if it's too much. That's also okay. valid. Yep. I think too much would be good because it just provides as much information as possible because I'm sure whoever's joining would not have 
any idea that there are so many groups to join. So I like that it's a very extensive list. Cool. Does this auto, does this give a, I assume it does other, does that give a, like a box when you click it or it doesn't? Uh, I thought it did. Are you able to try that? Preview it. Um, is there a preview button? I don't know. Is it the eyeball? That, oh yeah. yeah, the eyeball. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm with Kafaya too. I like the idea of more. I also think this sends, it's a nice signal. Oh, I should, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it sends a nice signal that don't forget this is open source and there are millions of ways to contribute to an open source project. So I like that too, that it keeps getting us. And I also like that you don't lead with like contributing code, so. Uh, I should add translation. That. Oh, that'd be that'd be good too. I agree. I think this looks great. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, you're welcome. Should I uh, get with Kevin then? Yeah. Figure out a place to put it. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably just issue. open an issue in the website yeah. repo and just say, "Here's this, this, like what, how, how to do this." Okay. All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Lauren. One question about it. Um, the words that feel a little bit ambiguous to me are like helping. Um, like if I were to sign up for like wanting to be involved, like I guess I would be interested in like what I would be doing if I was doing chaos cast or like social media and outreach. Like specifically, does that mean like, you know, planning like a social media calendar, creating the post? Like, like I know that that goes into like infinitely many things. Um, I like but more maybe specific. just like putting in parentheses like some examples of what that work might include um, would help me identify which ones were actually like relevant to me. That's a good idea. I left it ambiguous on purpose because I figured that this would be a starting point and I would okay. be the one to contact them and get more information about like what specifically they would be interested in. But I really like the idea of having some examples because it is kind of maybe too ambiguous. Yeah, I I, th I like that a lot. Um, okay. And if nothing else, like this helps me identify like an area that I want to focus on. It's not necessarily Perfect. the activity. It lets me know like what theme I guess I'd be working with. So that makes sense too. I like it. Awesome. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks, Lauren. Yep. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, Amy. I put the minutes in the chat. All right. Uh, all good. Again, thanks, Elizabeth. Oh, there's my circus peanuts. <laughs> Amy, just just so you know, <laughs> I don't know if you're connected audio wise, but Elizabeth likes circus peanuts. <laughs> I am now. I'm trying to edit something in WordPress and it's killing me. Oh yeah, WordPress <laughs> has a tendency of doing that. Um, all right, great. So if the next few items on the list, if you recall, we um, are kind of asked to revisit metrics that we have released in the last release or the last many releases. And the idea here is, again, that the metrics aren't necessarily just set in stone and that over time uh, they may change. Over time, we may reread a sentence that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. You know, just kind of making sure that they still hold relevance in 2021 and 2022. So I, I just, you know, honestly, we could probably just pick a, a few here and start. I did pro I did think that, you know, the, the spreadsheet, this thing, I think we have it up here. Um, this, so the spreadsheet, we might want to add a column that has been like re- Reevaluated or re reviewed, and you know, and then a date or something like that. You know what I mean? Just so we can kind of keep track of it ourselves. And maybe we could just do that in the remarks. Maybe we don't need to add a column that this metric was reevaluated then. I was, I, I totally agree with that. I was also kind of wondering a while back if we should have a column for the 
the release that the metric was a part of. I know that information is already in the website though, so I kind of mm -hmm. didn't bring it up, but maybe that would be helpful too. So we could easily, the next time we want to review, say, all right, let's look at the ones that went out in during the, gotcha. right. you know, this release. Just a thought. No, it's a good idea. And uh, you know, this, the spreadsheet is so incredibly helpful to be honest with you. Um, and I don't think adding that type of information would start overloading this at all. So maybe just here at the, right after a link to the metric or the issue, we could just say, and your idea would be like, um, speaker demographics while well, these are actually, now that's been fixed. Um, I need to change that, but like these were released as version or whatever the date of the actual metrics release was, you know, that makes sense. Um, okay. So two notes, update, um, tracking. Um, column for the, is it the release number, the release version? Version number. The best of both worlds. Version number under which uh, metric was released. In the remarks column, um, indicate if a metric something like that. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, a quick question: Would mm -hmm. would we ever want to? Maybe this is not a question for this group, but would we ever want to list on the metric itself the date of last review or date of last update or something like That's not so that bad. people know that yeah. we've looked at it? I, I kind of like that idea. Um, so maybe to, you know, we're starting to, if you haven't noticed in a lot of the metrics, we're starting to add kind of like these small pieces of information that provide a little bit more depth on the metrics. So for example, um, we could add this, which is when the metric was like last approved, reviewed. Um, we also have the a DEI disclaimer now. So if there's a metric that's not coming out of the DEI working group, that there could be a, a statement about how a particular metric could be related to DEI. So we've started to include that. And then uh, the other is um, the privacy, as we talked about in the community call yesterday. Remember that we might start adding just kind of a, a pointer to our a privacy statement. So I don't think any of these additions add a lot of overhead for the for the metric. And I think they add, actually, they add some nice depth as well. Like, I don't think maintaining what you talk about here, Elizabeth, is that much work for a, for a group, do you? I don't, especially if we're doing it, like maybe, you know, since we have to review the metrics anyway, it's not, and then moving forward, we just add that information in as we go, so. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Okay. Um, Let's, can we, let's bring that up in the community call. Okay. That'd be a good idea. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm late. I had a student crisis. Well, we started, started without you. Well, I, obviously, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So do, should we just start by taking a look at, at one? I tried to pick what I would guess I didn't look at code of conduct, but what might be an easier one to take a look at, I'm guessing there, this wouldn't have changed too much. Um, so what do you say? We spend just a few minutes and we all click on that link and just give code of conduct a read and just kind of make any notes that you might have. I don't know what the best process here is um 
because this this really is the definitive one. I don't want to point people to perhaps the Google Doc that was used to create this, because there is a possibility that the Google Doc is a little bit behind this. You know how we normally start with Google Docs and then they make it, we do a lot of the editing and then they make it into the repo that are subsequently used for the web page. Yeah. And so the idea here is we just would read this, take a look at it, and then we can suggest changes if we see any. People have thoughts on this workflow wise. We could move this back to a Google Doc. That's what I was thinking. Just copy the raw. Mm -hmm. We could. Uh, yep, we could definitely do that, and then work in a Google Doc. It's just so much easier to work like together as a group of six here in a Google Doc. All right, let me. I'm going to stop my share, and I'll do that. Uh, I'm going to need to think about how how Google Docs work. Yeah, I do have to think about that too. Um, like what my folder structure should be. Hold on. So you know, while I'm doing this, Elizabeth, sure. why don't you tell Sean and Amy about what we learned about you today? <laughs> Can I pause the recording? So. <laughs> Again, thank you for your for your thoughts. Um, let me share my screen. So what I thought was going to be a metric that didn't really require <laughs> require much change. Again, I had not looked at it ahead of time, so that was just kind of a a, a wrong belief I had in my mind. And what we're doing here is just revisiting a, a released metric, which is code of conduct for. Um, or a project, or should we just say for project, for a project sounds better. Um, and we just ask people on this call to kind of read through this metric and think about how it could be expressed more clearly. And if there's any additional information that we wanna provide uh, with respect to the code of conduct. Uh, so you're looking at a lot here, you know, I think a lot of it is just a lot of it to me is about just a better expression of what this metric is about. There were a few, I think, um, bigger like ads to it. So, and, and good, good additions. So I'll just I think explain the description stuff. I added that because I think most codes of conduct are thrown in there because they're required and they're toothless. And I, I think like the presence of a code of conduct is one thing. Knowing what's appropriate and inappropriate is another thing. Having enforcement outlined is a third thing. Actually enforcing it is what I think gives people faith that the code of conduct means something and gives them some assurance it's an inclusive environment. And so I, using many, many words, tried to distinguish those things. No, I think it's good. I Reading it, it reads real well. I don't know what other people's thought are on the description. Um, so thanks, Sean. I like the description. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Looks good. I saw Hamilton recently, so. I was... <laughs> um, Elizabeth, did you want to, you added these. I think you added just some starter sentence parts to the sentences, which is great. I don't think yeah, it changed just, the... Just trying to make that match. Okay. Provides like a, yeah. something, not just... And then I added those two because I wanted to match them with the um, what we're doing for the code of conduct at event okay. and the DEI badging. So I just thought it would be better if it kind of lined up with that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I did a quick check. This does still exist. I just wanted to make sure the tool that still existed. It does. Um, through here, I had we had qualitative and quantitative approaches. To gathering the data, we had kind of a what I felt like was a random assortment uncategorized in the data collection strategies, and I just as they're deleted here, they were essentially recategorized. Uh, down below, and I 
fit everything into a Likert scale, just to be consistent. Again, kind of like the language that you had provided up here, Elizabeth, just to create consistency on the points. And I think that's it. Um, we can add contributors. So if you would like to add your name, please, please do so. We're not putting anybody's name down. It doesn't like, we're just not guessing that you want to have your name on there. All right. And Kafaya and Amy, if you'd like to be included as well, and you're not in the document or you are in the document, just say so and I'm happy to add you. Yeah, I'm not in it. Do you want to be added? Sure. Oops, Mary. <laughs> it's only three letters. <laughs> I was thinking of the Merrick at the end already. That, that's what I was merging two of them together. All right. Uh, all right, great, everybody. So I think really the action item here is to take this new text and um, gosh, I don't, what's the easiest way to, to basically say we have all this new text and we have this original, you know, like I could go in here and edit, I guess it's just copy and pasting, just accepting everything and just, so it's, basically just a, a full overwrite. Is that right? That's what I would do. Okay. And then open an issue with the checklist and all that. Yeah, okay. Yep, no problem. Okay, so I, I can definitely do that. So um, let's go ahead and on the board diversity, we're gonna, let's um, wait. We can do this one next week, if that works. Um, I was just, I was just, I just, I thought we could just go through kind of one focus area at a time and governance seemed as good a place to start as anywhere. Um, all right. I just, I, I don't wanna do that just in the interest of time. I have a few more things on the list here. Um, so the metrics, I just wanna keep posted because I was looking at last week's minutes and we had talked about metrics models. And I think let's just hold off on metrics models as coming out of DEI for just a second. So in yesterday's metrics model call, we're really close to getting the template down just in terms of how we would go about expressing a metrics model um right now the, the i think the one final thing we're talking about is oh here let me sh let me just show you what kind of what they're looking like at the moment um well, matt's doing that i'll say that we've yeah. done a good job creating example metrics models and now we're searching for i think the, there's a creative exercise of optimally representing them using more than tables All right, so I will share my screen again here. So this is not a DEI related metrics model, but this is kind of how they're they're ultimately looking. So we have kind of a description of why you care Oops. Um, with respect to a metrics model, the metrics associated with that model with a, a small description below each one that might help locate people as to why a particular metric would be valuable in this metrics model, in this case called project decline. Um, any known implementations, references, contributors, kind of the usual suspects. Um, what we're working on right now is how we go about setting up the why you should care. And so the question is, is like we have 
in this case, your organization relies on a blah, 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 blah. But there could also be a setup like as a community manager. There could also be a setup like as a program manager. Or a project Matt, manager. Yeah. Matt, a quick question. Is the um is the thought there then that every one of the metrics models will apply to these three categories of people? This is what we don't know yet. Okay. This is what we couldn't sort out yesterday. Okay. Gotcha. So we all agree that and like do we do it as as first person? Like, do we write this why you should care? I should care because you know, do we start it that way or you should care because Sean made a good point on on using you is that it it helps kind of connect to the audience a little better a little bit better um, but apparently use cases I don't I didn't know this are often written in I in first person form mm -hmm. so we're just we just want to be consistent as to how we set these up so that if Sean's writing a metrics model and Elizabeth you're writing a metrics model and I am we're not all we're not setting it up differently at the beginning so we're just trying to find what that consistency would be and we didn't have an answer in yesterday's meeting, but that's what we're working on right now. So I think until we get that sorted out in that working group, we should just just wait for a second here before we start developing them. So is everybody all right with that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Okay. And like I said, I think I think in two weeks, we I bet we solve this in the next meeting. And then in two weeks, we can bring this forward. All right. Um, there was something from last week about cleaning up technical debt in uh, in the DEI working group. And I think this would be something that all of the working groups should do. It's kind of like this period of that we're in right now. It's almost kind of like reflecting on how we've set up our repositories, how, how what our metrics look like. Let's just you know like stop for a second and take a look. Um, there are a couple things in here which I I found fairly interesting. So, so this is the DEI um, repository, and we have, for example, a meeting minutes markdown file from four years ago. So for a while, what we had intended to do was essentially take all of our meeting minutes and get them. Obviously, you can see get them into Markdown so that they would be available on the repository as well. But we don't follow that model anymore. We just all of our meeting minutes are just in a Google Doc. So that's my guess is that could go away. I don't know what people's thoughts are on that. Um, we have goals from 2019. We have this is just these are all the links that I have here. Templates, ethics. This one of the ethics ones is interesting. We have templates that we really don't this is like an old focus area like how we design focus areas and this i don't even know what this is <laughs> i mean it's so my thought is, is we should I should we should move perhaps the focus area template over there is a community templates folder in like a repository the slash chaos slash community and I think there's a templates I think we have a templates folder there this could be moved there and some of these I'm personally I just think they should be removed Yeah, I was going to say, or renamed to like archived within the family or something to indicate that those are not to be used. So like make a folder that says like, don't use anything in here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm like not, I'm always afraid to throw things away. I don't know why, just because like, I don't know. I, don't know. I love throwing things away. <laughs> I'm one of those that's people, like a, a year later, I'm like, oh, that's what that was. <laughs> I'm a pack rat with Elizabeth. I keep everything. Yeah. I just you never know when you need it. it. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Is there a way have... to archive files? I know you can archive repositories, right? Wasn't everything available <laughs> through, through the logs anyway on GitHub? Sean, I can't I always go back in time? 
And and throw away logs? No. Re reference logs to find old. If I if I deleted meeting minutes here. Yes, there's a commit log that somewhere says that you can find that again. Um, if if the only thing that you can do is you can squash commits um, and eliminate things. <clears throat> <clears throat> or if you put it in a branch and it never got merged. So it's possible to delete things, but it's not easy. I hear silence. Did I lose my No, time? no, you didn't. I mean, I'm just thinking, <laughs> like, <laughs> to me, creating a folder called, like, other <laughs> and then putting our markdown files in there it doesn't. So if you if we made what if we made like a chaos archived repo and just dump everything in there and then it's read only nobody can get like it's just there that's my that's my uh, vote. What do other people think? So that the question is is we have some old stuff in here like meeting minutes markdown we don't need that in this repository that doesn't need to be in the front of this repository because it's it just is it's four years old and we don't do that anymore so what what should we do with this file from 2018 <laughs> okay we can delete it that's fine Yay! <laughs> No, I'm waiting for other people to. to... Right. We could dot hide it and get ignore. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> no, I just, no, I'm honestly all these suggestions. I'm just thinking, um, we could just hide it. Sean, do you have thoughts? Lauren or Kafia? I. I, I... <clears throat> What what I've done when I want to keep something but not make it public by default is I simply create another branch, put all that stuff in it, leave that branch there, and have the main branch be what I want people to see Ooh. today. So I've used, I've used old branches as archives of stuff I don't want to lose as part of my digital pack rat neurosis that you know I'm working closely with a series of therapists. <laughs> and <they're all> just fun. <laughs> so what do you when you do that what do you name the branch do you call it like like often something often something like um like either server name archive or uh dev transition archive i use the word archive fairly often okay that's a good idea. So Amy thought that was a good idea. Elizabeth, what do you think? Yeah, plus one. Okay. So for those of you that want to archive this, there will be an action item for you. <laughs> well, we could just branch the whole thing. Yeah, we would just branch the whole thing. Yeah, okay. And then we were just like, I think we can just call like archive October 27th, 2021. And then one of those neat people cleans out the main branch. And then, yes, exactly. And then the, <laughs> the yes, and then I can just delete a bunch of things. And okay, that seems good. Where does that branch live then? Just on that per person's personal account, I guess? Like it would be just, under. Just right here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. All right. Uh, good idea. All right. Thank you. So maybe when somebody makes that branch, just ping me and then I'll start kind of, or yeah, I'll actually start cleaning up some of these things that are three and four years old. Okay. Good. Uh, good. As always, good progress. Um, next week, many of us are going to be at Open Source Summit, the Member Summit. At least Sean and I will be. Yep, so I'll be there. Should we keep the meeting? I think there's going to be enough people around to keep the meeting. Elizabeth, could I ask you to maybe facilitate next week? Sure thing. I think I was supposed to facilitate this week, so sorry. You were.
Okay. All right, great. Uh, as always, thank you, everybody. We always make great progress. Um, I was saying in the metrics model meeting last night, this is just it's so interesting because like any one meeting, like we just took a look at one metric, right? And we just talked about metrics model updates, or we just talked about cleaning up technical debt. Um, but over time, all of these small meetings build into to things that I'm starting to really learn are extremely useful for people that are thinking about uh, community health more broadly. And so I know that a lot of people are very appreciative of all the work that we're doing in kind of formalizing all, all of this stuff. And it's just, it's slowly but surely I'm getting this done. So thank you for everybody and all of your, your time <laughs> to work on this. Really appreciated. All right, I will uh, stop my share and stop the recording and wish you all the best. Take care, all. Take Bye, care, everybody. everybody.